Hey there, this is The Gerbil, welcome back. And this is a comprehensive Ewok strategy guide four part series. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Oh, <laughs> before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Grab yourself a nice cold one and get comfy. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, you're probably wondering real quick, why The Gerbil? I'm gonna tell you, I love Ewoks. <laughs> They got me into this game, and you see that big graphic on the left? Yeah, that's that's that was an accident, to be honest. But yeah, I recently beat Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, leader with Jedi Master Kenobi, Relic 7, and then a Relic 8 Grandmaster Yoda. I've done some incredible things with Ewoks, and I'm going to show you in this strategy guide how you may be able to do the same. With that, I do need to, to be clear that they are not and will not ever be a meta team. You can do amazing things and get high banner results with them consistently, but there's a bit of RNG in there and, um, well, they're not meta. <laughs> Nonetheless, I love them and you can do a lot of fun things. Here we go. Four parts. Part one of this video series is going to include Ewok characters. I'm gonna go over each of them explain the roles of kits, and some allies and ally synergies. Part two, I'll talk about the different squads, combat strats, and the Ewok events. And then in part three, I'm going to get into mods in depth, Zetas, and Omicrons. And part four, the galaxy of who to fight and who to avoid. All right, so let's look at our team, our Ewoks, light side. They are all light side. Of course, they come from Return of the Jedi. And you got Chief Chirpa, Tebow, Lagre, Poplu, Ewok Elder, Wicket, and Scout. Down below here, you can see where the farming locations are for each of them. Just above that are the rolls. Now, I will point out there are two leaders and two tanks and two attackers, one healer, one support. That support, Lagre, is the hardest to farm. Absolutely the hardest. He's only available in the guild store. Nowhere else, no nodes in light side, dark side, whatever. So if you're gonna go the Ewok route, and I'm gonna go ahead and emphasize that Lagre is essential, then you need to start farming him immediately if you have not. He's really, really important. Okay, let's take a look at their kits real quick. Chief Chirpa is your primary leader, and I say primary because Tebow is highly ineffective as a leader, except for some niche circumstances. Now, Tebow is kind of, or sorry, Chirpa is a slower character, but his basic is rather impressive in that if you are targeting a, an enemy with 50% turn meter or more, it gives himself 35% turn meter. Now that compounds with his leadership, so jump to the bottom, simple tactics. Ewok allies gain 20% turn meter, and more damage whenever they perform a basic. Now that applies to him too. So when he hits somebody with 50% turn meter or more, he's going to give himself 30, sorry, 55% turn meter. He's already halfway to his next turn. If you use that in conjunction with other Ewoks to do assists, you can make him take turns back to back to back to back. And what makes that really powerful is his second special, Tribal Unity. It's going to call all Ewoks plus one non-Ewok ally to assist. So if you have Han Solo in there, 3PO, or another ally, then they are all five going to attack. And of course, because of that leadership, all the Ewoks are going to gain 20% turn meter because they're using their basic when they assist. And then the non-Ewok ally is going to get half that, um, 10%. Now back to the leadership. Whenever an Ewok uses a special ability, Ewok allies have a 60% chance to assist or to call an assist. So let's say Ewok uh, or Wicket does his AOE special. There's a 60% chance to call a random Ewok in there to assist, which will give that random Ewok 20% turn meter. Now, Chirpa's second one, Ancestral Secrets. This is going to basically heal everyone 20% of their max health and provide them heal over time for three turns. This heal over time is really important uh, when we think about modding. Also, it's going to give your Ewoks retribution so they counterattack, but it's not super effective. Also, under that Tribal Unity, all your, your Ewoks are going to get speed up, which is 25% additional speed. So let's say your Ewoks have a base speed of 200. They will now have 250 speed. It's enough to change the tide of the game so that you want to keep that running as much as possible. 
Now Tebow, I'm not gonna discuss as in depth. Suffice it to say, he's one of the best turn meter removal characters in the game. His basic, when he is stealth, uh, will remove 100% turn meter from the target enemy. So as I'll explain in the third video of mods, you want a potency, potency, potency mod on him all over so that he's always removing turn meter. His second ability is so enticing, but I'm telling you if you're an early game player, don't use or rely on this actually, don't rely on it. It gives all your Ewoks 100% turn meter and then he gains stealth. That's so that he can start you know, using his basic. Sure, that sounds great, but it's actually really slow, believe it or not, relative to your other Ewoks because it has a cooldown of six. So he's only gonna be able to do it every sixth turn. Whereas your other Ewoks are gonna provide a lot more turn meter to each other. And they're gonna take more turns a lot faster. His next ability, Bring Low, is just going to remove all buffs from the target, hit decent damage, and a chance to remove 60% turn meter if any buffs were removed, which is good. Now his leadership ability, gives a better than half chance to put any Rand or any Ewok in stealth at the start of their turn. This is good for a couple Ewoks, but overall it's not that effective. Uh, it's also, there's a chance that you're gonna gain a quarter or 25% turn meter. But again, relative to Chirpa and the assists, uh, the 20% basic assist turn meter gain through the assists, it's nowhere near as fast, nor is it reliable. Under Chirpa's leadership, you can guarantee to apply that 20% turn meter by calling the, the targeted assist right and left. So by far, leaps and bounds ahead, Chirpa is a better leader. Now you have two attackers. Uh, Wicket, similar situation to the leaders, is absolutely your better leader. His basic jab or inquisitive jab, uh, it, it gives him a critical chance up, which is nice. And if anyone calls him for assist, he gives them critical chance up. Uh, of course, Chirpa's gonna give him 20% turn meter. So just go ahead and tack that on to every basic. Plus 20% turn meter, plus 20% turn meter. Forest Ambush is amazing. Deals damage to all enemies, cool, but gives all Ewoks 10% turn meter for each critical hit. So let's suppose you do that early and there are five enemies and all five get crits. That's 50% turn meter to your team. You're probably thinking you want crit chance on him. You actually do not want critical chance mods and I'll explain that in the third episode. Sounds counterintuitive, and that's why Ewoks are actually a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of their abilities are actually counterintuitive. Now, the Gorilla Strike uh, it calls a targeted Ewok, it puts him and that assisting Ewok into stealth, and they both get critical damage up. Now, we'll come back to this. This is super important later in strategies, but I'm just going to go ahead and say you generally want to call in uh, Poplu the first time to put him under stealth if he's not, because that's gonna put him in a taunt, which we'll get to, or Ewok Elder or Chief Chirpa. Fervative Tactics is a static ability that's always into play, it's not an activated one. He gains critical chance or critical damage up 10% for each living Ewok ally uh, and each stealth ally. So this works pretty good under Tebow, but eh, it's not worth it, promise it's not. Uh, at the end of his turn, he has a 50% chance to take another turn, followed by a 10% chance to take another turn. And I have played in games where he's taken four, five, six turns consecutively. Also, whenever he scores a critical hit, all Ewoks are going to recover health and protection. Notice they're going to recover twice the rate of health. So his forest ambush up there, five crit hits, that's going to equate 50% turn meter plus 20% health plus 10% protection recovery to all Ewoks. All right. Scout, by contrast, is a very simple character. His static ability gives him some evasion up, big whoop, a chance to gain turn meter, big whoop. Uh, his basic has a 55% chance to remove 50% turn meter from the target, so he's a bit of a control player here. And then his special is going to call... Um, well, it's going to call a, a uh, sorry, I'm stuttering here. Uh, it deals physical damage to target enemy with an additional 50% chance of critical hit and call a, an ally to assist. That's what I'm trying to say, I'll just read it. So in other words, his special is gonna guarantee one other Ewok attacks 
And then, of course, if you're running Chirput, then there's a 60% chance a, a third Ewok will attack. And, of course, both of those assisters will gain turn meter. But he's meh. He's totally meh. Support Logre. Insane. 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 I'm not even going to read his basic. Hypnotize is where it's all at. Hypnotize is going to dispel all buffs from a target enemy. So think tank or someone with speed up or retribution or something like that. It's going to take away 100% of their turn meter. But more importantly, it's going to daze the entire enemy team. When they're dazed, they cannot counter a strike or attack. They cannot gain bonus turn meter. They, 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 uh, well, they're vulnerable, in other words, right? So it's going to slow the enemy team, and they're going to be just sitting ducks for you. His prophetic visions gives everyone 20% turn meter, so that's an engine for turn meter. It gives you foresight and advantage, and offense up. So a little bit of aggressiveness, and then, of course, a lot of defense right there. His Zeta, which I'll talk about more later, it's not amazing, but it does give everybody health up which I think is 30% additional health. I forget, need to look that one up. Um, and then whenever uh, an Ewok ally scores a critical hit, uh, all Ewoks with health up will recover 10% health. This is actually gonna keep your entire team alive a lot longer. So you've got, um, in Logre, you've got turn meter bump for the team, you've got mass days and turn meter removal on the opponents, and then you've got health up but sustainability. Um, he's just great. All round, he's great. Uh, his basic is meh. All right, your one and only healer. This guy is probably the biggest turn meter driver actually for the team because in his basic, he has a 60% chance to give himself 50% turn meter. I mean, like, think about that. Whack. Basic, 50% plus Chirpa's leadership, 20%. He's already at 70% turn meter. And then, if that triggers, all Ewoks will gain 25% turn meter. So I have played in Arena, Grand Arena, where Ewok Elder has taken, a, a, you know, everyone's kind of low turn meter. He takes a turn, gains 70%, takes another turn, gains 70%, takes a third turn consecutively which means all of my Ewoks have just received 75% turn meter and all go before the enemy team. It's it's nuts, it's totally nuts. Now, his tribal healer heals everybody 30% of his own max health. So again, there's a health incentive here and a chance to revive a defeated ally. Power of the Forest is a guaranteed revive of a defeated ally. They're gonna come back at 40% health and then 45%, um, sorry, they will assist when they are revived. And there's a chance that Ewok Elder will gain 45% turn meter if he revives someone. All right, it's, it's good uh, and it's a guaranteed revive, but I don't know how often I revive an Ewok to watch the enemy shoot them right back down dead the very next turn. It's very frustrating. But Ewok Elder is a major turn meter engine and sustainability in grindy matches. I, I, he's, he's wicked. You got to have him. All right. Tanks. You got two of them, believe it or not. Uh, Poplu, I will probably go to my grave believing he's still one of the best tanks in the game because he has high armor, which is good, but he recovers health and protection at an alarming rate. You can knock this guy down into the red and before you blink, he's back up to full health and protection, which is great for banners in GAC. And look at his, strat his static ability down there. It says, don't hold back. Whenever Poplo gains a status effect, he recovers 5% health and protection. That status effect includes debuffs. So whether he's like um, shocked, well, probably not shocked, but uh, whenever he receives anything, day, speed down, tenacity down, offense down, critical chance down, whatever. That's a status effect, which is in effect healing him. Also, of course, Ewoks are going to spread buffs like candy. I mean, just everything they do gives buffs. Those are all status effects. So he's going to recover super fast. Um, also, whenever he gains stealth buff, he's going to lose it and immediately taunt. So he's going to recover 10% health and protection just from that. And there's some big synergies here with, I'll get to. And then when he's not taunting, he's going to have 25% bonus speed, which is really important. And we'll get to that also later. His basic is going to remove all buffs from target enemies. So if there's a tank or a big threat in your way and you need to clear the road, then call him for an assist and it will take out all of those buffs. 
his diversion second ability is going to put him into taunt and inflict speed down on your opponents i don't ever really rely on that it's also the only attack he has that's worth any damage his basic is like worthless i mean just assume it's going to hit for zero damage um galvanize is pretty good it's going to dispel all buffs on him and target ally the target ally is going to gain turn 10% turn meter and they're both going to attack. So you're going to get an assist and that basically means under Chirpa, the assisting ally gains 30% turn meter because of Chirpa's leadership. Now that galvanized though, that is that is probably going to be your first turn of every match for the rest of your life once you figure out how to use Ewoks. Pop Blue should always go first and use galvanize. And we'll get to that later when we talk about strategies. Tebow is the world's most craptacular useless tank. Don't, please, don't ever use him as a tank. I mean, he thrives in stealth. How is he tanking? How is he effective if he's in stealth? I think CG was like high when they thought of that. Hey, let's put him in stealth. Let's call him a tank. It's worthless as a tank, okay? I'm not gonna go over his kit a second time. All right, let's look at some allies. Ewok allies, there's a lot of them, but I picked eight or seven here. To focus on R2D2, Princess Leia, C3PO, Hermit Yoda, Barris, Gamora, and Garden Cup. <laughs> Please don't leave. I'm not. I'm not crazy. They're not actually allies. They're worthless. Uh, but R2, C3PO, and Leia, uh, and Hermit Yoda all have some stealth synergies that I will actually explain. Barris is just totally plug and play. I mean, she is. I think she's fabulous, way underrated character. People are definitely in the last year starting to put her, you know, in a lot of two, uh, squads of like Padme and, and Jedi's because not really so much her healing, but because of her Zeta, um, where where when I think they hit when a character is critically hit, they recover 20% of their health. And when we talk about mods, you're gonna want to mod most of your Ewoks for health, so they all have a lot of health, and that's super useful. But let's talk about the one biggest synergy here. And next video, I'm gonna go into this in more depth when I talk about teams. But there's some a really, really good like B team strategy here that I've only seen a couple of people use. Ewoks with Tebow, I mean Tebow's leadership does have a place. Remember that his leadership gives you a chance to put any uh, ally in stealth at the start of their turn. R2-D2 gives stealth to the whole team or everyone but one chosen person. Princess Leia gains damage bonuses when she's in stealth and she also has a move that all it does is put her in stealth so you can avoid that special while she's there if she's under stealth. And Ewoks honestly don't have a lot of damage output. Wicked's great, Scout is meh but she can do quite a lot of damage if you mod her right and you don't have to waste a turn putting her in stealth. Now C-3PO is a golden god that has unbelievable synergies right and left and he puts himself into, into stealth. Bear that in mind for a second. All right, now Poplu is a stealth, it's a buff, and when he gets that stealth buff, he goes into taunt. That's two uh, status effects, so he's gonna heal up really quick. Now Tebow start I mean, his leadership, Poplu takes a turn. If you're lucky, Tebow's effect triggers. He puts himself in stealth, puts himself into taunt mode. Just starting the turn, he heals himself. That's great. Now, Wicket is the last one here. For each ally, he gains 10% critical damage if they're stealth. So if you've got R2 out there and he stealths everyone and then Tebow puts them in the stealth, then the whole team's in stealth, he's getting plus 50% critical damage. That's fantastic. And then of course, you, he gets an additional 10% for each Ewok. So he has a potential for, depending how you run this team, 80 to 90% extra critical damage. It's really, really good. And when we talk about team strategies later, I'll go into more depth on this. I'm not saying that this is gonna beat A teams. It is absolutely not, but it is a highly, highly effective GAC cleanup team, a control team, or even a backside um, defense team if you're not like late game, um, you know, against five, six, seven million GP players. If, if you are still relatively new in the game, this is a team or a, a variety of teams that can totally confuse your enemies and wreck some havoc on defense if if they don't know what to do. If they do, it's not gonna work. 
All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it was rather long. Um, I'm gonna do three more. Remember, this is just the first. The next one, I'm gonna talk about squad compositions and specific combat strategies, as well as Ewok events. And then after that, I'm gonna get into mods, Zetas, and the Omicron for Chirpa. And then episode four will be all about the opponents, who to fight, who not to fight, and some, some kill orders and random tips and tricks. Okay, I really hope you stuck around and enjoyed this. If so, hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, folks.